Good day, what a wonderful privilege to be with you again today. The title for this day's message is God's Way. But let us start with a prayer first. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your love, your grace, your mercy. As always, Lord, I cannot help but just praise and worship you. You alone are good. You alone are wonderful. And we, it is our honor this day to, to just worship you and praise you and, and tell you how much we love you because you have first loved us. And we vow to give you alone the glory. Amen. Now, I want to start with a very well-known old picture for the older saints. I know when we were children and we visited our family, in most of the Afrikaans houses you found this old uh, painting or sketch coming from an old Dutch uh, background. And this was called the Breede in the Smaller Weg, which literally means the broad and the narrow, narrow way. As kids, this picture once explained to you used to scare the living daylights out of you. You will walk into a room and you will see the painting and it's like almost, I'm not seeing it, I'm not seeing it. Why? Why were we afraid of that painting? Because with, especially with being a child, you've got all those ideas of all the wonderful things out there. And this picture, literally in one frame, condensed all your choices to two, the good or the bad, the broad or the narrow, that was it. And, and it shows you how all of, of life fits in along one of those ways. Why is it so important to know which way I'm traveling on? Let me start from the book of Proverbs. Proverbs 14 verse 12 there is a way which seemeth right unto a man but the end thereof are the ways of death then we read in matthew 7 verse 13 enter ye in at the straight gate for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction and many there be which go in thereat because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few there be that find it. So we can clearly see that we need to know which road we are traveling on. It is like traveling on a bus and suddenly you realize, well, but this bus isn't going towards my destination. You don't like just kick back and say, oh, well, then I'll just go where the bus goes or go with the flow. No, at the very first stop, you, you, you ask to be let off. I want to get off at the first opportunity I get. So what is the alternative then? And are there really an alternative? You see the Lord never intended this Matthew 7 portion as bad news when we talk about the gospel. But it was, before we get to, to verse 13 and 14, there was a verse 12. There is still today a verse 12. And it says uh, the following. Matthew 7, 12, Therefore all things whatsoever ye would that man should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. So he starts with our attitude, uh, or attitude then towards our neighbor. I will return to this portion. But where do we start then on this narrow way? You see, it starts when we read about verse 12, it says, you can... You can make a certain choice by the way you treat other people and then all of a sudden find that you are not in the right way anymore. Because what we do to other people, what we sow into others' life, lives, that are what we reap. And that's not always what we want. Jeremiah 6 verse 16 says, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein. And you shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. Let me read you another verse quickly. Jeremiah 18 verse 15. Because my people have forgotten me, they have burnt incense to vanity, and they have caused them to stumble in their ways from the ancient paths, to walk in paths in a way not cast up. 
In both these scriptures, we read about the old or the ancient paths. In Hebrew, uh, they use the very same word, uh, namely Olam. And Olam literally means eternal, ancient, or forever. Genesis 21 verse 33, we read that Olam is also one of the names of God. And Abraham planted a, gro a grove in Bathsheba and called there on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. So he called on who? El Olam, the Ancient of Days, God who was and is and will forever be. We sing it whenever we sing the song Ancient of Days. And yet we don't know the Hebrew word or root of this specific portion. When Jeremiah 6 verse 16 speaks about the good old way, the Hebrew word is tof. And, and tof means prosperous, joyous, happy, along that line, a lot of beautiful uh, uh, words describing that. So you will often hear or see the, the Hebrew greeting on Sundays, understand, uh, according to, to, to the biblical calendar, uh, you start with Sunday, you end on the, on, on the Sabbath, which is Saturday. So in the beginning uh, of, and they start, you know, from, from sunrise, uh, uh, sunset to sunrise. So when at sun uh, set on Saturday night, it is the beginning of the new week. And then they will call one another, or just uh, went, as they go past, or they will tell you, Shavatov, that means have a good week, have a special week, have a happy week. Do you not understand that God uh, wishes us to walk the good road? That, that He wishes us to have a good life? He placed man on the good way when He created us. And He placed us in a good place when He created us. Through our own sin, through our own choices, we walked away from the original planned way. Jeremiah is very outspoken about this. And he said that man has found all the wrong and false reasons to look for health and advice. Man likes to hear that he's good, that everything is all right, and that he doesn't have to change his ways. No, don't bother my brother. Uh, you don't need to be so strict. No, 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 it's, it's no problem. You are still okay. Just don't overdo it. You can't play with sin and expect not to burn. So this is exactly why churches with preachers that love to tickle uh, the ears of the congregants and, and the only sp sermons they ever hear are only motivational speeches and niceties. That churches are always full, back to the brim. It is a sign of the times. It is expected. It will be like that. Many churches have become like, like a quick drive through a mc salvation and a mc healing and a mc deliverance and a mc sing song with a short mc sermon. But that won't cut the ice. God knows that short term solutions leads to a long term destruction. The Bible is very clear in Ephesians 4.23 and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Daniel 11.32 and such as violate the covenant, he shall pervert and seduce with flatteries. But the people who know their God shall prove themselves strong and shall stand firm and do exploits for God. You always understand the problem, or one of the many problems in life is that we keep on treating symptoms. And we never cut to the root of the problem. What is causing this? We have seen it so many times. Uh, children with, with, with ill or bad behavior. And then when you get to the point where you really uh, take the time to go sit down and give them some of your uh, undivided attention, you realize that the only thing they want is they want to speak about where all of this start. But you don't understand I feel left out. But you don't understand I feel rejected. But you don't understand. And all of a sudden you realize because... Uh, a small thing in a child's world is a world event because that's his whole world. And that is why many people carry their, their, their um, burdens for many, many, many years. One of the main things that, that, that are keeping churches from evangelization is that because of all of this, we are 
so busy trying to undo the damage done by superficial and even false teachings and, sol and solutions to, to, uh, that the church has turned inward. We are so busy counseling our fellow members in church that we go, don't get the time anymore to go out and spread the gospel. Busy to undo traditions, religiosity, stuff that we that would have and should have been dealt with long ago. But, but the people are as, are as miserable in church as those outside. And unfortunately, many are sitting in dead churches where they where, where it's okay, that just don't move, just sit quiet. If it's like somebody that hurt his face and he says, Well, as long as I don't smile, it won't hurt. That won't do it. You need to deal with the problem. Why can I, can't I smile? What is the wrong? What can I do to overcome this thing? And most are so busy uh, inward that, 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 and counseling one another. People in Afrikaans, they use the word befray. Bringing some, some freedom to a man or a woman oppressed. You must understand how these things work, and I'm not going to, to go into the fullness of it. But, but, but the end has always got a beginning. It starts with, with being impressed by something. Just take a child, for instance. You take your child to the movies, and he watches uh, Superman. So he's impressed by Superman. Now in the old times, when we were children, if we would... Uh, watch a cowboy movie or, or uh, say a Bruce Lee movie which were actually frowned upon by, by, by our parents uh, uh, at a young age but if you come home what is the first thing you do you chop and you go on and you, you just Bruce Lee and it's all the funny noises or you go around uh, in my case shooting around the house and chasing uh, uh, Indians or whatever crooks on an on a imaginary horse and then there will come a time where mom or dad will say, it's enough. It's enough for now. Stop it. You wouldn't even think of disobeying them. That was enough. And it ended there. You too were impressed. But because that seed of impression got dealt with, although it be through your parents, it had a stop. But now the roles are totally reversed. Now because you are so impressed with Superman, mom and dad goes and to keep you quiet they buy you Superman pajamas, Superman uh, duvet, Superman curtains, your, 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 uh, your underclothes, the Superman stuff, your little Tupperware or whatever uh, type of uh, thing you carry your food in to school is Superman. Your little b bag book is Superman. They supply everything and immediately they, they allow that impression to become an obs obsession because every time you see something new from of Superman you want that as well because I haven't got that but my friends have got that. And what does the, peop uh, the parents do? Now they want to keep peace in the house and they just keep on supplying and actually watering that seed that started with being impressed that has now become an obsession. Now the next step, unless dealt with at this level which is already a little bit too late, but unless you absolutely deal with, deal with it and now, and, and now you need uh, another type, type of touch, you can't just say no because you went along all the way. It wasn't him, that child, or her, that child, that brought, brought the stuff. It was you, the parent. So now you can't just cut everything off. The moment you start saying no, the child now goes from being impressed to being obsessed to being depressed. It's now depression. My mom and dad don't love me anymore. I don't get the stuff anymore. So it's all about stuff. All about superficial stuff. If you allow them to just continue, they may go through the, the step, uh, uh, through depression. And in the end, that is where people get opened up in the spiritual realm to becoming possessed. And it comes, becomes possession of everything else. Because you've opened doors 
That is the utmost. That is the end. The total end. But it started somewhere with a root. And we need to know right now. We as parents need to understand, although I am, I love my child dearly, but I'm not his friend. There's times that I need to give him advice, that I need to, 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 to show an example of what he should do. Because in the end, you and me, mom and dad, and this wasn't even planned for, for, for parents now, but, 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 but this is just the word of God, so alive and true. We are the, uh, the road markers to our uh, children, to our grandchildren. We need to point to the right way. We are now standing at the dead end of the road and we need to make a choice. Our GPS has gone silent. Our map isn't clear anymore. Let me change that for you. John 14 verse 6 Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I want to encourage you. Choose right. According to where you are on that road, it may be difficult to turn back. The problem is, uh, we normally uh, see the, 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 the picture of, of, of making a choice as a T in the road, you go either go left or right. But normally it's a 180 degree about turn. You need to go back and start afresh. But choose right today. I promise you, if you choose right, it will be worth it all. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, only you, by your wisdom and your guidance, can take us to the right road. Because the Bible is very clear in the book of Psalms that your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. So Father, we ask that you will really shine your light in our lives. Everyone listening and watching this short video today, that they will just be encouraged. There is another opportunity where I can change my life, where I can make sure that I reach the right destination. And I thank you for that. And I ask that you will be with them every step of the way as they put their hands in you, like, like Father, in yours, like, like, like a child put their hands in the hand of their mom or dad. Father, this old song, this is put your hand in the hand of the man that created this earth, that changed, that made the waters, that made the seas, that made everything. Put your hand in the hand. Father, I thank you now. In Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. As for me, I want God's way to be my way. God bless you. I journey here below For there is no other highway That a child of God should go Though the road be stiff and rough If he leads me it's enough I want God's way to be my way every day. I want God's way to be my way as I journey here below. For there is no other highway. That a child of God should go Though the road be steep and rough If he leads me in it's enough I want God's way to be my way Every day I 
I won't go swear to be my way I sight Jenny here below For there is no other highway That a child of God should go Though the road be steep and rough If he leads me it's enough I won't go swear to be my way Every day Though the road be steep and rough If he leads me it's enough I won't go swear to be my way every day. Though the road be steep and rough, if he leads me to know, I won't go swear to be my way. God leads me, it's enough. I won't go away to be my way every day.